those who can, when you go to the grocery store, buy an extra thing of rice and buy an extra thing of beans. And uh, we want to kind of fill up with some of the stable over there. Amen? So that's what we'll be doing. So we pray that... Uh, <laughs> We pray that uh, I brought that in here for a reason. I thought we might have somebody that need to get a hold of us. But, uh, it, you know, if you remember, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, or any time, uh, beans and rice, we need to kind of replenish our food bank over there. Brother Donnie and Betty does a good job in that. We appreciate them, what they do. Uh, we had some, I think we had some folks uh, Sunday morning or Sunday night that had to use that, didn't we, Donnie? And I praise God that Liberty Ministry has got a food bank and can help people uh, in situations like that. Amen. So uh, y'all just remember to, to bring some of that stuff. I think we get canned goods and stuff pretty regular, but we need some good old stable beans and rice and some of those things. So y'all re remember uh, maybe uh, to do that. So uh, we're looking at that. And also I want you to remember the group is coming back tomorrow. Be praying for them. I'm looking forward to them be here Sunday morning. Are we live, Ruth? We are now, okay, praise God. And we uh, uh, are so glad that our Internet folks is here with us tonight. We're having some uh, uh, torrential rains out there tonight and everything. So uh, uh, y'all just pray for us. Everything's going to be okay here. And uh, we love y'all. We pray and everything's going to be okay for you. So we at Liberty Ministries, uh, I'm Pastor Rick Bagwell. We thank you so much for being with us tonight. And we invite you just to be in our service tonight as we uh, uh, just minister in the Lord tonight. Praise God. So, uh, and another thing I want to remind the folks, Pastor Jeanette uh, will be at Nightline February the 11th and the, uh, uh, the 13th, I believe, and March the 25th and 13th. Nathan will be there also, also co-hosting on the 11th and 13th and March the 11th and 13th and singing on February 25th. So be praying for him. God's moving him in a, a, a place there that's going to be good, we think, and, uh, and we love him. He's got place here naturally, but... God's moving uh, in some other areas, too. So we pray that the anointing will be on Sister Jeanette and the anointing will be on Brother Nathan as he moves in a mighty way. Brother Steve, are you about ready up there, buddy? Yeah, brother. Are you going to come help me? Yes, sir, I will. If you let me know what gear you're in, we'll amen. do it. Huh? So, amen. Amen. Gear of amen. How's that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's raining outside in case anybody didn't notice. <clears throat> Just a little bit, torrential rain. That, that's what we're expecting in the spirit, though. Just, just, just so much, it's just drenching the whole Greenville area. That's, that's what we're uh, seeking for. It's not going to happen if we close all the church doors, though, is it? Yeah. But, uh, you know, Jesus went out in the storm. He taught Peter how to walk on the water. If they, if they wouldn't have went out during that storm, it, that's, it wouldn't have been recorded in the Bible, something we wouldn't have had. So even in a storm, Jesus can move, and we can learn something, and we can get closer to God. Amen. Uh, we're in that D here. <clears throat> My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on Nor pain nor death can enter there I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on my heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on It's glittering towers, the sun outshine I feel like traveling on That heavenly mansion shall be mine I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Let others seek a home below. I feel like traveling on. 
which flames devour or waves overflow. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on. Until that blessed home I see, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. I'm going to sing that last verse again. It says, the Lord has been so good to me. Hallelujah. How many in here the Lord's been so good to you? Not, not because we deserved it or because we did any good works or because of anything we've done on our own, but that's the way he revealed himself. When he revealed himself to Moses, what did he say? The Lord gracious and merciful. Hallelujah. And that, that's back in the Old Testament. That's way back, thousands of years ago. That's the way he, he revealed himself. Let's sing that last verse again. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Amen. Yes, indeed. This old, old uh, hymn here says, I surrender all. And there's another, there's another old hymn that says, uh, is your all on the altar? The only way you can surrender all is it's all, right? <laughs> it's not 99%, everything. You got to surrender all. If you want the Lord to move in all of your life, you have to surrender all of your life to him. If you only surrender 50%, what are you going to get? Yeah, 50% at the best. You know, you can't bargain with God can't bargain with God. Holly, I wouldn't want to. I just trust in his mercy. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, 
All to Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. And I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all. To Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Your love and power, let Thy blessings fall on me. play something new here. I sprung this on the choir. I don't know if they're going to follow me or not. Uh, this is called You're Worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy, Lord. Before thy throne I heard the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. For you alone, O oh Lord, are worthy. To be praised, to sing your praises while we came. We lift you up, Lord, and we long to see your glory and magnify your name. You are worthy, you are worthy, Lord. Before thy throne, I heard the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. We enter through the blood of Jesus, the Father, Son, one in the same. We lift you up, Lord, and we long to see your glory. And magnify your name. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Before thy throne I heard the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. 
For you alone, O oh Lord, are worthy to be praised. To sing your praise is why we came. We lift you up, Lord, and we long to see your glory and magnify your name. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Before thy throne I heard the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. We enter through the blood of Jesus. The Father, Son, one in the same. We lift you up, Lord, and we long to see your glory and magnify your name. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Before thy throne I heard the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. Let all creation magnify the King. Okay, we're going to do another one here. Uh, this is called One Accord. These are some songs I used to play in another band I was in. Welcome in this place. Spirit of the Lord, as we seek your face and magnify your name, all in one accord, wash us in your blood, for our sins you died, Lord Jesus. Revive this house of clay, and in my heart you'll stay. Come and dwell inside. Jesus, my Lord, I surrender to you. You offer more than worldly pleasure gives, and I'm still believing for your promise that you will return and take us home. Welcome in this place, Spirit of the Lord, as we seek your face and magnify your name, all in one accord, wash us in your blood. 
for our sins you died Lord Jesus revive this house of clay and in my heart you'll stay come and dwell inside Amen We've done this one back I don't know, about maybe six weeks ago or something. You might remember it. It's called Create in Me a Clean Heart, and it's right out of Psalms 51. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew her right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew her right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew her right spirit within me. And cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew her right spirit within me Amen Want to do another one or you want to take a long one or what do you want to do? Let me have some ushers, please. Amen. One, two.
You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Before that throne, I heard the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. For you alone, O oh Lord, are worthy to be praised. To sing your praises why we came. We lift you up, Lord, and we long to see your glory and magnify your name. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Before that throne I heard the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Let all creation magnify the King. Let all creation magnify the King. Amen. I'll give a quick testimony where brother pastor here, associate pastor is getting ready. <laughs> okay, he's got a quick one. Uh, Patty, what was that? Uh, about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, when uh, Brenda had her issue, pardon me, about a week and a half ago, yeah, uh, Patty's mom got a, a phone call. Her sister wasn't doing very well. They took her to the uh, hospital. When she got to the hospital, uh, her speech was really slurred bad. She couldn't talk. She wasn't making any sense at all. They did an MRI, and they came back, and they, they told her. They come up and whispered her in her ear and said, we've got some really bad news. They said, you've got a really big blood clot on your brain. They said, you could die at any time. And then they walked out of the room. They left her like that. So, well... I'm hospitals can only do so much. What what can you do? So uh, anyhow, Martha told me about that, and I was kind of really pressed because I wanted to go to the hospital, and I was like, "Well, it's really late, and I had to get up, and I hadn't got any sleep all week, and uh, I was struggling with what to do. I don't know if they'd even let me in." And I, I said, "Well, let's just pray, because anytime Martha wants to pray about something, God always moves, you know." And, so I says, well, let's go ahead and pray. And uh, so we sat down on the couch, and we prayed for just a few minutes. And I says, you know, you know, the Lord sent the word, and he tells us to do that too, you know. Sometimes you can't be where somebody's at. Sometimes you've got to have the faith and just, just to believe that, that God will do it. So we, I, I went ahead and uh, prayed with her, and we agreed, and we, we spoke the word, and, and we cursed all that stuff, and, and we said, we're not going to believe the doctor's reports. She went up the next day, uh, or they took her up the next day, and they did another MRI. And I, when they did this MRI, they came back and they said, you can go home, there's absolutely nothing the matter with you. So so going from a death sentence, there's nothing, you know, you could die at any time now, to just go home, you can go home right now, there's nothing the matter with you. So that's, that's the type of God that we serve, you know, we just... We need to believe, but he will do it. You know, I've, I've seen him do stuff, and, you know, it wasn't me, it was him. So, thank you, brother. Her aunt. Check one, two. Can you hear? Yeah. It was your aunt. Man, can you imagine that? I mean, he gave her death sentence one day, and the next day God says, hey, that's wrong. She's got a purpose, and uh, God ain't through with her yet. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve. I appreciate that praise and work. I enjoyed that. That was really, uh, I really liked that. I liked that last song. We'll have to practice some more on that last song. I want to do it some more. Amen. That You're worthy. He is worthy, isn't he? God is worthy to be praised. This testimony that Brother Steve just said, man, God's worthy to be praised. He is our Heavenly Father. And we got to, you know, I, I was reading and studying 
God about how to pray and, and some of these things. You know, I've read it many times. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But we spoke to Jesus every time he prayed to the Father. He prayed, Father, like he's my Father. I'm his earthly son. Amen? Well, he is our heavenly Father, and we need to have that affection when we pray for him, my Father. I love you so much. I praise you today. I ask God that look at these needs or touch this loved one or do these things that needs to be done. Amen? So that we need to come to him in, a, in, in that a reverence way of he is our heavenly Father, and you know your earthly Father loves you, and he only wants best for you. Amen? Can you imagine how our heavenly Father, how much he loves us? He sent his only begotten Son to die for you and I that... Uh, uh, praise God, uh, uh, through him we can be saved and be with our Heavenly Father for eternity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen? So I, I'm excited about that, praise God. So I was looking at that. Uh, let's just look and see what the Lord has for us uh, tonight. I was uh, looking. Uh, I'm going to be in Luke 24. I'm looking at Luke 24, 1 through 53. I'm going to look at some things uh, that the Lord, and this is talking about the time uh, where the Lord was crucified. You see, Jesus came on his cross, and I'm talking uh, to a lot of the Internet folks up there too and the folks here. Jesus came upon this earth for one purpose. His purpose was fulfill the Scriptures. And the, the, the fulfill the Scriptures, uh, he went and done what uh, the Heavenly Father wanted him to do. Amen? And so he fulfilled those Scriptures. He died on that cross. But praise God, just like the Scriptures said on the third day, he would come out of that tomb. And he's the only, he's the first of the begotten Son. He's the only one, praise God, of all the gods of the world. Our God has come out of the tomb. Amen. He is not there. He is alive. He's a God that you can cry out to. He's a God that you can pray to. And he'll hear your prayers. He'll answer your prayers, praise God, because he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he is interceding for you and I. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited about that. We serve a risen Savior that's alive. Amen. And Sunday, I'm going to be preaching about some of that. But he is alive. And he was seen by many people when he come out of that tomb. But let's look at uh, some of the disciples here in Luke 24. It's talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, we'll just look at it. And on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone was rolled away from the, from the tomb, from the sepulcher. Think about that. It was a big old stone, and that tomb was just temporarily used, by the way. I think a rich man might have owned that tomb, and he loaned it to Jesus our Lord because, see, he wasn't going to be there just a few days, and he's going to be gone. <laughs> Amen? Coming out of that grave. Look here. In the... In Luke 24, verse 2, And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you can imagine these are the loved ones, uh, Mary Magdalene, some of them come in and they're looking in a tomb, and they come with the spices to uh, put on Jesus and everything, and uh, they wanted to see their Lord, and their Lord was gone. So I know the first thing they started thinking, you know, hey, What's happened here? Somebody has stolen our Lord. What's going on here, you know? But some of them start thinking, you know, he said he would come back on the third day. Something's going on here. We need to look at this. Amen? So we're going to get a little bit deeper here and look in the Scriptures and see what the Word says. Praise God. Look here. And, uh, and, and, and they entered in in verse 3, and, and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Two angels saying, what are y'all looking for? Who'd you come to see? He ain't here, by the way. Think about that. Can you imagine going down there and big, two big angels sitting down there? What are you, who are you looking for? We're looking for our Lord. He's, we we want to uh, be here with him. You know, well, he ain't here. He's, he's, he's got some other important business he's doing. Amen. <laughs> Look here. And it said, it came to pass as they were much perplexed there about. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and they were... And they were afraid, and they bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek you the living among the dead? Now, that's a powerful statement there, isn't it? That, 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 that's, that's prophecy fulfilled. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why are you in here looking for him? Because he is alive. Amen? Now, let's go a little bit further. Look here. He is not here, but he has risen, praise God. 
Remember how he spake and, and when he was yet in Galilee saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Now, Jesus told them this was going to happen. You know, I've been studying and looking at some of the things, you know, and uh, I'm reading about old Pilate. You know, uh, they brought Jesus down there. 600 soldiers come down there to get Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. 600, that was a normal thing for that, because uh, this was an important thing in Jerusalem, okay, that you're going to get uh, uh, Jesus. This is an important thing. We need to take some men down there because some people might have to rise up and come against you. So they took the soldiers down there. Judas was going to go down there with them and identify Jesus by a kiss on the cheek, okay? So there's in the Garden of Gethsemane down there, and I like it when uh, Jesus showing who he is. He's, he's deity. He's the king. He is God, Emmanuel, with us like the scriptures said it would be, praise God. And those soldiers come up to Jesus, and they're going to take him, you know, and all of a sudden, all of them soldiers fell back on the ground. Whoa, that's showing some awesome power there, ain't it? You see, Jesus was saying, hey, this is my disciples. You won't mess with my disciples, but you can mess with me because this is going to be Scripture fulfilled. So they got up uh, uh, from the ground and everything and says, and Jesus told them, so you're looking for Jesus, uh, looking for me. Here I am. I've told you that I'm him. I'm here. So what do you want? You let these go their way. And so they all went off. And, of course, old Peter, you know, tried to cut the, uh, the guy's head off and hit the guy's ear. And, and, you know, Jesus put the ear back on everything, just kind of building up to what's happened here, you know. And uh, so they took him crucified. They went uh, before Pilate, you know, and Pilate tried his best to tell them Jews, this man is innocent. This man is innocent. I see no need to crucify this man. I'll scourge him and let him go. But no, the Jews kept hollering, if you don't let him go, you love uh, this man, uh, we're going to tell uh, Caesar on you, you know. Political things started here. And old Pilate told him, said, this man's innocent, uh, and I'm going to wash my hands of this. And said, you, you, you want to go ahead and see crucifying him uh, during the Passover was against the Jewish law in the first place. And so they were going to go ahead and do and break the law and do those things, uh, what they uh, had planned to do. They wanted to get rid of Jesus because Jesus was putting a threat to, to their religious position in the synagogue. Uh, some of the Pharisees and Sadducees wanted to sit in the high places, you see. And they wanted to be worshipped by the people and say those long prayers and all that. Look at me, you know. They didn't know who Jesus was. They didn't know who deity was. You see, the prophet's been prophesying for a thousand years that he is coming. He's coming back. Uh, and his purpose is to defeat the devil. He's going to die on the cross. Uh, he's going to be uh, buried. And on the third day, praise God, we just seen where it said he has risen from the dead, uh, the grave. Amen. You know, and I was reading and studying a little bit of that the other day about uh, Peter how, you know, it still touches me that our Lord had to suffer so much uh, during that crucifixion. I believe Jesus suffered more than any man in the world's ever suffered before. They beat him. They spit on him. They hit him with the palms of his hand. There were 600 soldiers mocked him. They put thorns on his head. Uh, they, they spit on him. Can you imagine 600 soldiers spitting on you? Degraded uh, it, like you can't imagine. He went through so much torture and pain. They, 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 dis, they, they mocked him, and it wasn't for an hour or two. It's for five or six hours. You see, he went in that uh, court, and they took him from one place to Herod and, and another place and this other place. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, they started taking him for midnight, and it was 9 o'clock the next day before he died. So he went through all that. And by the way, Peter was warming himself by the fire because it was cold. I bet our Lord didn't have many clothes on. They probably didn't whooped him and beat him and blood was coming everywhere. Well, he started going up Galgotha. I mean, going up to that uh, place called Skull up there, carrying his cross. He was beaten so bad he couldn't carry it, and another man had to carry his cross for him. But he went. His purpose was to die on that cross for you and I, praise God. And he fulfilled that purpose when he came. He fulfilled the scripture when he came, praise God. And we give him the glory. He deserves all of our praise and, and, and all the glory, glory, praise God, because of what he has done for you and I. But the good thing about it here tonight, you know, I look at when I, when I first uh, got saved, I'd read that about the crucifixion. Man, I just cried. I didn't want to read that because it hurt me. But praise God, God showed me he ain't there. It's 2,000 years ago. He's in heaven. But he's coming back again with vengeance. He was the lamb then. Did you know when Jesus died on the cross, it was the Passover day? And when they was going to sacrifice the lamb on the Passover day is when the lamb of God was sacrificed. Amen. Same time. Can you imagine Scripture being fulfilled 
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All this word we're talking about, the Bible that we read and study in, praise God, it's truth. It's come to pass just like it said. And just like it said, he is coming back again. And he has risen. Now, we're going to look uh, and see uh, some of the things uh, that's up here. I like to trip over that thing the other day. <laughs> look here. Let's go down here. It says, in verse 7, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Look at here. And they returned to the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women but uh, were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And the words seemed uh, uh, them as idle tales, and they believed them not. The apostles didn't believe them. Jesus told the apostles what was going to happen, and the uh, disciples and everything. And what's going on here? Why don't you believe? I, I, you of unbelief, you know. But you know, you can imagine. Put yourself in their feet. Here they're following the Lord, and they think the Lord's going to come up, and he's going to rule and reign there in Jerusalem at that time and be the king and defeat the Romans, and everything's going to be good. You know, that's what they had in their mind. But they've seen our Lord do all of these miracles, praise God, uh, all of this time that he was his ministers about three years long uh, after he uh, uh, got baptized in the Jordan River, and John the Baptist baptized him. He seen the dove descend upon him, said, this is the one, and it uh, uh, stayed on him. He said, this is one, this is the Christ. And so all of these things started happening. He started doing his ministry. He'd seen all these miracles and everything, these disciples, but they fled at that garden that night. It, it, sh it, it shook them up. We know what Peter done. He denied him three times. But he come back with an honest heart, crying out to the Lord. And look what old Peter done right here. It says right here in verse 12, Then arose Peter, and he ran to the sepulcher, and he stooping down, and behold, linen cloths laid by them uh, uh, selves, and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And verse 13, it says, And behold, two of them, they went the day to the village. They went walking down through there, and Jesus appears, and he'll question. Jesus appears to these two and starts questioning and talking to them, what's going on? And they, these two didn't recognize Jesus at first. And Jesus said, what's going on? He said, well, ain't you heard about the Nazarene, about the crucifixion of our Lord and all these things happening? You know? And all of a sudden, uh, they realized who this was. Look here. In verse 7, they said unto him, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and you are sad? Now, I'm going to drop, drop down to 25. And he said to them, they were talking about what had happened, you know, and all these things, uh, and they were talking about and Jesus said, then he said to them, O fools, and slow to the heart to believe, all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Uh, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, expounded unto them all in the, in the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see, Jesus, uh, you know, you can imagine he had to do this thing. He tried to ask uh, his heavenly father, let this cup pass from me. But he said, not my will, your will. He said, uh, I'm going to do what you call me to do. That was that flesh rising up. Hey, it's going to be pretty rough. I don't want to do this. But if you want me to do it, and I know I'm supposed to be here to do it, I'm going to do it. So Jesus went to that cross. But think of another thing. He was thinking, hey, I come down from up there. I was deity. I'm going back to my glory. It could have been a part of Jesus said, I'm ready to get back up out of my glory and get this program on, program on the road. Amen. And he did 2,000 years ago for you and I. Praise God. Amen. And, and you know, we got to be excited as Christians. There's a lot going on in the world like I can't even imagine that's going on in the world. I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. But we're in the last days. I believe that, Justin. I believe we're here and, and we're the last, uh, that latter rain. We're going to see some of that. We're going to see the coming of the Lord. Praise God. And he's going to come uh, not as a lamb. He's coming with vengeance. And we're coming with him because we're going to go up, be raptured up with him. We're going to come back down with him. Amen. It's fixing to happen. I, I truly believe that. Now let's go a little bit further. And we're supposed to comfort each other with these words. Amen. Jesus appears and questions them. Now look at here. And, uh, and it came to pass as they were uh, communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. For some reason, they didn't know him at, the, at first. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk? And he told them about that. And we see that down verse 26 here. It says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That's what we're talking about there. 
And uh, in verse 30, I want you to look right here. Jesus is made known to them. Verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and he broke it and gave it to them. Now, you see this Jesus, which was dead in the grave, all of a sudden, uh, he's flesh and bones, and he's sitting. He's not a spirit. He's sitting with these two guys. They invited him in to have uh, uh, some, some dinner or lunch. And so he's sitting with them, and he's breaking bed like he did before he went uh, 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 to Passover and crucified on the cross. And all of a sudden, let's look and see what happened right here. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and he, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And look at here, verse 31, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Wow! That's supernatural, ain't it? But man, he's king of kings and the Lord of lords. He was, their eyes were open. They realized we're eating with the Lord. He is alive. That's him. We with him. Praise God. He's alive. He vanished. But they knew he was alive. They knew it was him, amen, beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's just like when God speaks to us sometimes. There's times, uh, Lord, is this you? But there's times you know when God speaks to you, man, you know it's him, don't you? You know it's him. Just like these two men, I guarantee you, they knew it was the Lord. They eat with him. Can you imagine? And that's not a spirit eating with them. That was flesh and bone. That was Christ, the first of the begotten. See, we're going to be like him. We're going to have immortal bodies like him. Now, look here. We're talking about some of these things. We're talking about in verse 38. And he said unto them, Why do you, are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, and it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. You see right there? A spirit don't have flesh and bones, but he had flesh and bones. He's the first begotten. Praise God. We're going to be like him. Amen. Now, look right here. You know, they, there's a lot of proofs here that, uh, that he did resurrect. Uh, what did he say right here? He said, look at my hands, look at my feet. Well, uh, some of his, uh, now, Doubt and Thomas, he was absent at that time. But Jesus appeared to the ten, and he said, look at my hands, look at my feet. Who do you think I am? And they said, he, this is him. See, that is proof of his resurrection right there. We see some of it, you know. Uh, it is myself. Uh, it's not another different person. It's me. Handle me and see. Feel them hands. Look at them. Them nails went in there. See, the traditional way to crucify a man, they tied them up on there and they left them hanging for two or three days and they come and break their legs so they would die quicker sometimes. Well, they come to break Jesus' leg because they put him up there early that morning and uh, it was time for the Passover and they said, go break. And there was uh, two thieves on his left and his right and one of them got saved and was in paradise uh, that very day with Jesus. But, uh, Jesus, uh, they did a little different with him. They drove spikes through his hands, spikes through his feet, and they hung him up there in a different way. And they come up there after he'd been hanging there so long, and uh, around 9 o'clock he gave up the ghost, and he told the Father, I, I commend my soul into uh, your hands, you know, and he died and gave up the ghost. And when he did, the soldiers come up there to break his leg so he would die quickly. And they realized they took a spear and they pierced him in the, in the side and blood and water came out. He was already dead, which is unusual. And then they took the two thieves on both sides and they broke their legs. Can you imagine you hanging up there dying? They come and break your legs. And what happens? Your legs swell up and the pain is you can't imagine and they die quicker. But Jesus was already dead. But the, the scripture said, wouldn't one bone of his body be broken? Amen? Let's go a little bit further out here and look and see. And uh, as spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me, and, and he showed them his hands and his feet. We just read that. Behold my hands and my feet. It, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Amen. Now look here. And while they were yet believed uh, not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have you any meat? Hey, he looks like he's hungry again, don't it? Amen. We're going to get to eat in heaven? Apparently we are. Look here. And uh, they gave him a piece of boiled, broiled fish and a honeycomb. That sounds pretty good, don't it? Some fish and 
honeycomb. He took it and he did eat before them. So they seen him do that right before their very eyes. He took the fish and honeycomb and he did eat before them, praise God. He is risen. They see that. Uh, they can see that, uh, that our Lord has risen, praise God. And they held him by his feet and they saw him uh, there. Now, he, has re he, has, he is resurrected, and we see that right here. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. And uh, in verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And uh, we see that, praise God. In verse 46 right here, the great commission that Christ gives to the Christians and, the, and also he gives us some power here too. Look at here <clears throat> in verse 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it uh, behooved Christ to suffer, because the prophets prophesied he had to do those things, and to raise from the dead on the third day. So on the third day, just like it's prophesied, he did raise. He is raised from the dead. He's not in the tomb. He is alive, praise God. And he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. In verse 47, he said, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So Jesus is telling the disciples right here, and he's telling us too, the gospel needs to be preached beginning in Jerusalem, the Jews first. And then, praise God, us Gentiles got a hold of it, and we're preaching the gospel all over the world. We have a group in the Dominican Republic right now that's been preaching for two weeks over there, and I know people have been saved, set free, healed, and delivered, praise God. You know, God calls uh, uh, some of us to go abroad. He calls some of us to minister right here in our community. He calls some of us to, uh, to minister down here in our jobs or wherever we're at, the grocery store, whatever, you know. But we are are endued with power. The Bible says we are when you get that baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God. It's called dynamo. It's called uh, 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 dunamis. And what that is, is a reproducing power that God has given us. Amen? And as you read and study God's Word every day, you re reduce, I mean, you're regenerating that power He's given us. Look at here. Let's go a little bit further right here. And uh, Jesus said, that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And verse 49, I want you to look right here. <clears throat> and behold, I send what? The promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And that's talking about Pentecost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you can have that. You can have more and more of God. It's how much you want. I don't know about y'all, but I had to have that. And God's commanded us to get that, to covet the gifts and to get that power so we can have that power to go out and witness and do those things. I'm going to be honest with you. I just wasn't a very good witness until I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I'm not talking about, I mean, I'm talking about that always, but I'm talking about the day we're seeing a risen Savior. He is our risen Savior. I'm talking to the people even all over the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the first of the begotten. He is the only one, the only God that has come out of the tomb in his life. The other gods that men have created are dead and they in the tomb. But Jesus Christ is not. Let's go a little bit further right here and look and see what the Word says. In, in verse four, uh, uh, 50, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. He lifted his hand and he blessed them. Look here, right here in verse 51. And it came to pass while he blessed them, listen to me, and while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up, uh, ascended up into heaven. Well, this same Jesus that went up into heaven is going to come back down from heaven and dwell and rule and reign here for a thousand years and then rule and reign uh, upon uh, this earth for eternity. And we're going to rule and reign with him, Amen. And I'm telling you, this is a tremendous thing to hold on to because it's just like the Scripture was prophesied that he would come. He did come. He fulfilled those Scriptures. And the Scriptures of prophecy of him coming back again is going to be fulfilled just like uh, the Scriptures uh, prophesied of him coming the first time. He's already, Yeshua, the Jewish God, has already come one time. He's coming again. I encourage you to seek the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. I want to tell you, our Lord is coming back. He blessed those people and he went to heaven. He's coming back again, just like he went up. He's coming back down again, praise God. And it says right here, 
And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and continued in the temple praising and blessing God. And praise God, that's what we're supposed to do as his children. We're supposed to praise him. We're supposed to bless him and cry out to him. We're supposed to tell other people what God's done. Just like my brother Steve uh, just testified about Patty's aunt, how God miraculously took her from a deathbed one day and supernaturally Gave her life the next day, praise God. That's the kind of God we serve. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to quit depending on the hospitals and doctors and all these other things, and you're going to have to start depending on the doctor, Jesus, because he is the great physician, amen, and he is coming back again. And we can see in Scripture this book uh, has fulfilled and, uh, and, it's, and it's held for thousands of years. This book is still current, and this book is truth. This is the Bible that God had given us until he comes back again. But you, you on the internet, you can read and look in God's word and see the things that we just talked about tonight. It's been documented. These things are true over thousands of years. This has come to pass just like the prophets and our Lord said it would. And he's coming back again. And we're right in the very end of the back right now of the Bible. He is coming again. And all of these people witnessed him as being a a resurrected Savior. Our Savior is not in the grave. He has been resurrected. And he is ascended back into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And he intercedes for us. Until we rapture and go up with him, then we'll come back with him and rule and reign for him for eternity. Praise God. That's exciting. But the most exciting thing about it is... He forgave us our sins. We didn't deserve it. We were as filthy rags, everybody, because of Adam and Eve, the, the sinful bloodline. Jesus was the innocent blood. He took hell, death, and the grave back from the devil. Is his. He will rule and reign for eternity ever. And by the way, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Was God. He's always been. That's who he is. Amen. But he came down as a God-man, and he dwelled among his creation, and he loves his creation. If it's up to him, all people will be saved, but it's not. He gave us a free will to choose where you go to hell or go to heaven, praise God. And I'm just going to ask you folks on the Internet, I appreciate folks being here. This is the church in here tonight. I know you got Jesus in your heart, praise God. I see it by your fruits, our fruits, amen. I'm going to ask those folks on that uh, Internet, if you don't know this, Jesus, I challenge you tonight to find you a Bible and and get in it and read and find out who Yeshua is, the truth. Find the truth because the truth will set you free, praise God. So I encourage you to get in God's Word. And if you feel the presence of the Lord on you right now, I pray you ask Jesus to come into your heart right now. And I pray you ask the Lord to give you intellect, wisdom, and knowledge of of Him and who He is, praise God, because He loves you so much. I pray that prayer right now. Receive Jesus in your heart and ask Him to forgive you for the sins. And if you mean it from your heart, He will do it for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will do that. And I pray if you want to uh, sow a seed in this ministry, get on the uh, internet there, look on lmcigreenville.org. That's where you're at now. And uh, you can click on uh, if you want to uh, make a contribution, be partners with us because we believe in spreading the gospel all over the world. And if you want to be, and if you get saved or, or rededicate your life tonight, I pray that you'll put a, a little note on there and say, Brother Rick, I, I received Jesus in my heart tonight because we want to rejoice with you. We love you so much. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we pray that God will go with you and be blessed tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Now I'm going to.